Welcome to Good Mythical More. Boy, I got placards for stacks. Stacks of placards. Look at all these. Okay. With animals that we are going that are extinct. We're gonna figure out which ones should be brought. How back. appropriate is it that we're playing Ready Pet Go on this animal themed Good Mythical More? Okay. This is when we take a look at your pet and we try to guess its name. Okay? Yes. This is a uh, hashtag a real GMM pet. Ready Pet Go submission from Tay. Which is probably Taylor Swift. I mean, she's a big Let's fan. Let's see Tay's, oh, you got a little bit of an underbite. Or, yeah. no, I, I, I hope it's an underbite. I think that's from the bottom. If Marvin. What? I guess, that's not the answer. Oh. <laughs> you said Marvin? Stevie's getting in like on this. I Marvin. Marvin. Oh, man. Leroy. He shot Marvin in the face. And that's what happened to his teeth. Boy, he needs some work, doesn't he? But he's living it. He's living with it. I think he's liking it. Well, what's he, what do you think? Marvin Leroy, what do you think his name is? Snooch. Snooter. 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 What's the reality? Hank. Oh, it's just one of those, huh? That's like very close to Marvin, in my opinion. Yeah, you yeah you went with the human name for an animal. You did, but you went with the two syllable, and I think <sighs> it's it's a strong one syllable. Hanks li looks like he's living his best life. Okay, did he come out that way, or was that once he lost his baby teeth? Uh, I think it's just it's a breed thing. All right, so we have a civitherium. Therium. Give me a little bit about the civitherium. This thing is recently extinct, like eight thousand years ago. Uh, this thing was potentially one of the largest. Ruminants to ever live stood close to ten feet tall. Dang! It chews its own cud. That's what a, these things. That's what were. ruminant means. It's just sitting over there like a cow. Yep, it's an even-toed ungulate that chews the cud regurgitated from its rumen. I like which the is its even first toes. Stomach. It makes me feel like the feet are complete versus the odd-toed quagga. Actually, I don't know if the quagga is odd-toed. So what is this? A half zebra, half. Uh, so, so this is a subspecies what? of zebra, indigenous to South Africa, hunted to extinction in Aww. 1878. Last captive quagga died in 1883. They were around eight feet long, four feet tall at the shoulder, so you know, basically zebra sized. So, the, I mean, this thing is twice as tall. You got to you got to bring back the big one. I mean, I this mean, is kind of like it uh, looks like sort of a dull zebra. Yeah, it's like it's sad because it happened recently, but. Listen, don't half-ass be in a zebra. Right. Get it? Yep. Half a donkey? Well, you know, you can have one of those. A zonkey. I think Rain Wilson actually owns one. Yep. Uh, so All right, so I agree. So we're, we're keeping we're bring, the zebra We're bringing back... Oh, we're gonna do this tournament style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So oh, now it's now. up against the elephant bird. Tell me about that, Rhett. Okay, again, close to 10 feet tall. Wow, okay. And could weigh anywhere from 770 to 1,600 pounds. Now, it's a big bird. Uh, indigenous to Madagascar, where they went extinct in the 1600s. Oh, wow. Again, like, man, th big Elephant birds bird. on islands didn't stand a chance with people. We were gonna, we were gonna eat you. A 10 you, foot you, you tall no chance. emu, I, it's flightless. In Madagascar, this- I'd like to see this thing take a flight. Right. <laughs> I don't. It doesn't even look like it has wings. Uh, closest modern sure relative is the kiwi bird in New Zealand. I mean, I mean, the kiwi bird's pretty small. It looks mean. It, it's like, like oh, birds are just think of like emu a ten foot a, tall a, bird. A, like a, it looks like a goose kind of. They're dinosaurs. Geese are really mean. I get really scared whenever a goose stares me down. And because they'll about, get you, a swan. I mean, but what is the criteria? Are we, are we break your. Bones. Are we not? Are we? Are we not bringing back things that we're scared of? Because yeah. that's a very particular way to think about. I think we it. should. We're bringing oh, back the coolest the yet safest thing. I mean, that thing you could be friends with is what I'm saying. I you could name that thing Marvin I think or Hank. I think it's got to be a Marvin combination Hank. of coolness, but also maybe we won't die. Or like, there's a way to contain this thing. This thing. This thing is. Um, it's just. It's not fully formed. Like it's. I don't know. Well, that's it's, why it died. It kind of has like a donkey quality, though. It looks stupid. This thing yeah. looks scary. Let's keep the scary. <gasps> oh, so you're going against what I thought you were saying you were going for. I thought you were saying, I thought Stevie was saying if it's scary, you don't bring it back because exactly. you're scared of it. I'm saying, you're why saying would the you opposite, not yeah. which is what I, I'm on yeah, page. Bring it, bring it back. Yeah, we need a little, we need some scarier animals in our it's lives. It's fine. I will have a donkey giraffe. Well, I also want to be able to. Yeah, you to, can have it. 
But I also want to be able to put it into like I, listen. I'm not really. I'm not a big believer in zoos, but I will say I want a big open natural habitat for this thing. But I want us to be able to interact with it on some level. Well, I can't just release one of these things out into the wild. It wouldn't be wise. You talking so, about this thing? I'll, yeah. So I'm saying the criteria I'm using is it's big, it's dangerous, but also it can be in an exhibit. All right. So next we got the opabin. The opabinia. Opabinia. Uh, is an extinct arthropod. Lived during the early Cambrian period, so this thing is w w w way old. I mean, it's got a bunch of bulbous eyeballs. This on thing it. was 700 feet long. Actually, it was only seven centimeters. Oh. <laughs> Cambrian, everything was very small back in the Cambrian period, so this, is, this would not be cool at all. It'd be like a little seven centimeter thing with a bunch of eyes. I mean, it's cool for a little bit. It looks like- It's like a sea monkey. It kind of looks like you could grab it and use it as like a back massager. Yeah, I'm sure that could work. Like grab it here and then you start rubbing this on your partner. Right, so that's your criteria. How can we use this animal as a tool? You're thinking like a human. <laughs> this is too small, scary, and deep in, yeah, the, yeah. in the ocean. Get, get rid of that thing. If it was just big, scary, and not in the ocean, it, that's what always works. Now we're talking saber-toothed tiger. Now being from the yes. Los Angeles area, having been to the La Brea Tar Pits, <laughs> We're familiar Smilodon. with a saber-toothed tiger. Again, this thing. Uh, First of all, this is like what is this? Like the rip-off Pixar version of a saber-toothed tiger? Well, why don't we get a real picture of a saber-toothed tiger? I want a real picture of a saber-toothed tiger, and I don't want you to. Uh, what? There is no real picture. What? Yeah, yeah. I've, be, I've been to the museum. There's lots of real pictures. Yeah, ten thousand years ago, they had photography. And they had, and you know what? They also had paintings. Like I'd settle for a painting. The painting wouldn't be that great. It would be what, a cave what's, painting. What's wrong with his eyes? Let me see. They're a little too deep set. There's nothing wrong with a deep set eye. Um, I mean, they're like both looking up. Like 120. Looks like he's dead. To, this thing could be almost a thousand pounds, depending on the specific species. It's very cool, though. Uh, obviously, super dangerous. This, these things would be really, really hard to contain. But boy, we could sell tickets. Man, think again. I'm talking big open habitat, like the North Carolina Zoo, they have that big, big open thing. Pasture. The, big pasture. I'm the not doing, I'm, everywhere not talking, in North I'm not talking Release cage. this thing into any pasture. Is that a nubby tail? Does it have a nubby tail? It does. It's got like a bobcat thing happening. Oh. Yeah, I think it's, I think this one was just uh, injured by the animator. I mean, think about how wide they have to open their mouth in order to get the end of the saber tooth. You gotta start in the right way if you're gonna bite. You know, you can't just like lunge with a little bite. You got a fully unhinged and bite. I think. I think it might be a problem. I, I don't even think that's how it works. I've never seen one in action. Like they keep their mouth shut. And I think still that bite they you? come in with the saber teeth and they grab your throat and pull it out, and then. But they, their mouth has to be open to do that. Yeah, it's, it's open, but he doesn't have to bite down on the bottom side. He just has to grab you like a hook. Is this a factor in our decision? I yeah, I want to so. see that happen to you. Yeah, yeah, me too. Uh, right, so, so saber we'll get, tooth will we'll keep get, that. You happy? Uh, uh, Stevie, I won't call you Christy. <laughs> you happy, Christy? Yes. Uh, Christy's watching. I'm, I know she's happy. This is a Flo, Flo, Floberomies Patersoni. Patersoni. This is a horrible name. All right, let's go to the next one. Hold on, hold on. I mean, obviously, hold this, on. You, like Pat, some dude named Patterson discovered this thing and gave it a bad name. Okay, it's you like a tell beaver me without a, a, a flappy tail. How big you think this thing was? This is a. The size of what? Like, name another animal that you think this is the size of. Well, this looks like a capybara. Yeah, it does. Um, but it, it, this is probably, a, um, I'd give this thing a good six feet. I think you could look me in the eyes. So you think it's six feet six tall? Six feet tall. That's probably about right, because it's the size of a bull. Wow. 10 feet long and weighed between 500 and 1,500 pounds. I just love the fact that everything was so big. Yeah, lots of room to get around. Oxygen or something, I don't know how it works. Can you imagine passing by a field full of giant gerbil guinea pig beavers? Just walking around like well, this, it's this cute. Well, this is the distant relative of the modern guinea pig. I mean, this is- make, Probably make a good pet. I mean, I don't know, guinea pigs will bite, right? I don't- I, I'm, I'm leaning towards keeping this because I like the cute herd uh, visualization. The cute herd. Oh, so we're getting a herd. We're not just bringing one back. Yeah, because well, they 
you know, you gotta bring two back, and then they, they need to procreate. Well, if we brought both of these back, this one would eat that one. Right, we, can't, we gotta get rid of one of them so this one can survive. Okay, we're gonna keep the Fuberomis patersoni. <laughs> Sony, uh, we do want to remind you about our podcast, Ear Biscuits. Uh, yeah, listen on, to it. On this latest episode, listen to it. we're gonna be talking about that experience that we had in, uh, in our creative house. Um, we're gonna be talking about how we made it. So if you're interested in that and the story behind that, uh, listen to Ear Biscuits this week. Lots of fun, it was lots of fun. Lots of fun, lots of fun. Leo Pluridon. The Leo Pluridon is a large carnivorous marine reptile. Mm. Uh, this thing was 16 to 23 feet long, weighed around one ton. This is gonna take, a, the construction on this tank is going to be out of this world. I don't really believe. Was this in Jurassic World? Something like this was. Yeah, they had it in a tank. And I it, think this and was it, it right? Something. They made one of it these. It ate something. It jumped it out maybe there. Maybe a person. I don't believe good in captive um, sea animals. That, 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 this is especially, this is a tough thing to, to you know what I'm talking, you gotta put, like there's no yeah. tank big enough for a sea animal. You can have like a prairie for like a horse or something, but once you start trying to take this thing out of the ocean, I mean, it's just gonna be sad. I would, and I would feel bad releasing one of these into the ocean. You can't just put it in the ocean, exactly. <laughs> right. So you can't keep it captive, you can't put it in the ocean. I think we need to bring it back, but then kill it and then display it. Okay, all right, so. And say, you know, we did bring it I back. Didn't think about that we, option. We had a second. We had to we kill it, though, thoughts. because we can't let it go, and we feel bad if we leave it in, inside of a tank. So we killed it. Here it is, kids. Come into the museum and enjoy it. I mean, that thing is. It's pretty good strategy. Scary. We're, we're, we're leaning towards cute now. Right and now, we're keeping we're, the large we're, guinea pig, which is a weird choice, I will say. We're down to the classic woolly mammoth. Now, we didn't do what any happened to here. them bringing this back? Because there was, I mean, people that were talking happen. so confidently about bringing back the woolly mammoth. That's right. I mean, what happened? They found the DNA in like a peat bog. Yeah, but, but why don't we have them? It's just an, a hairy elephant. I want one of these back. I think what they realized is that, you know, it's just a really warm elephant. Do we need to really work this hard? I mean, they're 12 feet tall, so that's big. Those tusks are just made for carrying firewood. See, look at me, the exploitative human. Yeah. Thinking about how I can use this thing for my firewood carrying. Yeah, because, because, but what because of your wood stove at home. What do they use? What is the woolly mammoth? Why do you have a mammoth? For? Well, I gotta keep the wood fire going. It may become a possibility within the next decade, the um, woolly mammoth revival project that started in 2015. They've been working since 2015. Well, I feel lied to because somebody was saying it was gonna happen sooner than, than then. I believe it was the Woolly Mammoth Revival Project that was claiming yeah. it was gonna happen earlier. Y'all need funding or something? They're already working on that. Wait, so we should work on the large guinea pig. Yeah, yeah, we should work on the- on Okay, the, on so the I mean, pig. against all odds, the very large guinea pig is the uh, the only animal that we've chosen to bring back. <laughs> and kill, and then display. We brought back an animal that if we were to have a zoo with it there, kids wouldn't even realize it was a, like right. a prehistoric <laughs> animal. They'd be like, oh, that's cool, where's that from? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, is it from South, think, South America? I don't even think they would stop. They, they wouldn't even stop. People would walk by. All this research goes yeah, yeah. into us bringing this back, and the kids don't even, Go to the well, exhibit. The, the problem is I mean, the, we the, had the way that we presented this them. thing. We could have had. Think about how much money we could have made off of this exhibit. I yeah, mean, even yeah, this thing yeah. stood a better chance because it was so tall. Stevie, this is this is just this is we blame it on Stevie. This, well, no, wait, I I'm bringing it. Hank back. Now let's change uh, it, Marvin. Okay. Yeah, All right. I, I my favorite is the saber toothed tiger. I want to bring that back. I want and I want to see it. Are you wanna, telling me this whole game was pointless? It was just something about the order and it being single yeah. elimination. There was no seeding that went into it. If you were thinking about doing an amusement park or a zoo that was gonna turn a profit, it's this, got, this is the choice. It's gotta be a carnivore. People would come for miles around to see one of these. I mean, Do you that's think this is how need... scientists uh, decide things? That's they a have Jurassic Park, that's the whole and... point. Yeah, that is what they did. It was about did. the money. Mm -hmm. Jurassic, see now we're thinking. They didn't bring back, they, they didn't bring back any of this Boring stuff like this one, maybe a ten foot tall bird. But you've seen it. You've seen an emu. Yeah, but it's it's just like a a big. It's emu. just like getting really close to an emu, and then like a hairy elephant. Like, I mean, that, been there, done that. And that's gonna happen anyway. We don't have to put our money into that. The, I'm giving the best name award to the quagga, but I'm gonna now start to call the saber tooth twiger. 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 Yeah, the saber tooth well, twiger. It, saber tooth twiger. Please come and check. Uh, I'm gonna call twiger. I don't know how to say this. So I'm gonna call this the quagga. 
Yeah. And these are the two that we're bringing back. Because you can, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And then they're gonna fight each other. But we're releasing that one. One round will be uh, uh, in water, one round will be in the air, on the yeah. land. Okay. <laughs> in the air. Like, slightly above the land. Like, yeah, where like, he walks. Yeah, they're in jet I mean, I would say the saber-toothed tiger is an air creature. He t he's not like a mole. I, I don't really understand, but you know what? I'm on board. Air fight, saber tooth twiger <laughs> versus the quagga. And then the winner is the twiger. Celebrate my birthday. New purchases of select plans are available at a big discount through October 22nd. Details at mythicalsociety.com.